If someone would have came up to me and yelled, Jason, I my usually my response is, whose boyfriend are you? <laughs> <laughs> play a player from the Himalayas. <laughs> we go get Jason in trouble. Yeah. I was about to say, Jason, for that joke, Jason. <laughs> You're sleeping on the couch tonight, buddy. <laughs> Oh, say what? You know, the song's about mini bikes. Yo. Mini bikes, mini bikes, what do you see? I see mini bikes, one, two, three. <laughs> Yo, what's up? Hey, everybody, this is Jason over here at Mini Bike and Ain't Easy, a podcast about power sports and everything mini bike and go kart related. My name's Jason. I got my main man, Zane, over here. I got Bernie's on the ones, twos, and threes. Yo, yo. And we got a special guest all the way from Cali. My it's man. It's your boy, Day Day. It's my man, Day Day. Day to go. <laughs> Live studio audience, everyone calm down. Guys. You'll get geez, autographs please. after the show. Oh Relax. God, everybody. Please. What's up, Day Day? What's going on? Is it hot out here? Not really. I got a jacket on this time. <laughs> but I say welcome to Texas. <laughs> and I think we've hit over 100 day or... 30 days of over 100? What was the magic number? Something like that, yeah. I think it's we're at uh, 20 days, I want to say. Whoa. Not as bad as last summer, but close. But Pre- anyways. Pretty impressive. Yeah. You made the trip all the way from Cali out here. I did. Another one, once again. It's good to see you <laughs> in the flesh. I appreciate y'all. This one was a little easier, though, because you weren't driving it, right? Well, I didn't drive last time either. We didn't drive either. last time either, that's right. Shh, don't tell nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so what you been up to this week? Um, Recovering from my fall, you know. Oh, we've got to get into that. Because the last time I saw you was Pull Star Picnic. Yeah. Actually, let's back it up even more. For, th- for those who don't know Day Day, In the Life with Day Day, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. TikTok. TikTok, Volts Mini Bike Shop, Extraordinaire, Everything. Helper. Yeah, so Day Day, first off, him asked me a very a very good question, <laughs> and I had no answer to it. Is Day Day short for something? Yeah. It's not, actually, it's not it's just my nickname. Oh, that's just your nickname. Yeah, okay. Only a few people know my real government name. Oh. And I like to keep it as everybody just knowing me as Day Day. Oh, okay, got you. So, you know what? Can you say your name and we're going to just bleep it out and no one's going to know? Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Day Day. Okay. Well, don't. I, yeah, now we've said it. Now I'm going to have to bleep, no, you bleep it out. I like it. Bleep. Bleep. Yeah. <laughs> so, how did you become in the life with Day Day? What kind of inspired that? What's the meaning behind it? What are you trying to get across? Honestly, you know, I've always been super, you know, fascinated with cameras. And I was already in a mini bike scene. So, it's like, why not? And plus, the things that was going on on the West Coast, we really needed somebody that was going to be behind the lens of the camera. So, it was like, why not? Like, I already know somewhat mm. what to do with a camera. So, why not just take it to that next level? And I feel like, I'm doing an okay job, but, you know, I can improve and, you know, I would like to see, like, real productions behind it and things that I do on my side time, I would like to see happen to the mini bike world. So, yeah. you know, slowly I'm working on it, trying to progress towards it, and that's about it, really. Yeah, having your eye out there in Compton really opened up my eyes, like, wow, this scene is alive and well, and it's underground, and it's awesome, and it's, like, Fast and Furious with mini bikes i'm like that is awesome that you are showing the whole world that hey this exists it's a ton of fun and these guys are really fast the speeds you know shout out to arlie he just did 105 wow. shout out to you know big daddy motorsports over at fast lane you know he was the first record holder of making a small block go 100 miles an hour mm. pretty impressive that's very impressive mini bikes are not meant to do speed at all you know they're meant to sell as you know your local walmart your local you know just any hobby store but 100 miles an hour or anything over 40 or even 25 is pretty crazy i was gonna say i mean regularly we are hearing about people down at the local track who are doing like 70 80 maybe some of them are pushing 90 but yeah like the only people i've heard of who are hitting 100 and over is the guys out in compton so I don't know. Have you heard of anyone else who's been hitting numbers like that? Mm, not that I've seen, but you got to think about it this way. The people that's on the West Coast that's doing mini bikes, like seriously, have, all have a background of, you know, mechanics, whether it's, 
you know, RC cars or street racing actual cars or, you know, go-karts, you know, like Daryl and did probably pocket bikes, you know, 125 Chinese motors, anything with a motor, you probably lay his hands on. So mm-hmm. same thing for Arlie. Arlie been in the mm-hmm. game for, you know, a few years that I've known him as, and he's just been progressing slowly and working his way up and really, you know, been known for the city. Nice. Okay. What's, what's the usual crowds you guys are getting on the weekends for the meets? The meets be huge, especially tournaments. Tournaments, like, it's hard to even gather a number because we have, like, both sides. Like, it's like a, a family reunion on tournament day. You have ice cream trucks. You got taco vendors. Like, things that you would see, like, pretty much at the picnic would be going on. But we're all there just for mini bike racing, <laughs> which is crazy. Yeah. I remember the time when we came down there and it was like, yeah, there's like a food truck out and like everyone just kind of walking back and down the sidelines yeah. while races are going down the middle. <laughs> it's like being at the track, yeah. just yeah. not done on legal terms. <laughs> yeah. So do the cop do the cops step in? Yeah, I mean, last last time I was out there, we pretty much got chased off while we were just we wasn't even riding. We was just doing videos and making content, and the police came and I had like. To stuff like eight bikes in the back of my truck and i had like bikes oh, hanging man. oh my gosh <laughs> it was a complete mess man but the police is not too fond of us i mean for the most part i honestly feel like it depends on the officer but they try to leave us alone then i guess when they get too crowded or you know the security guards start calling the police and say hey i would like you know my boss is calling me say i don't want these people on my property they gotta go so we just go to the next street <laughs> so are there legal drag strips in your area not I was it is it is one uh Erndale which is probably about 35 45 minutes but they will not allow us to run since we are not NHRA classified okay really yeah man okay so what we need is more public racing spaces it sounds like I mean all the places that we even tried to rent out like you know the airstrips and you know, different private people, they just not, <laughs> they're not fond of it. I mean, I get it, it's liability reasons, insurance reasons, like people want to know if the crowd is even going to be big enough for you, for me to let you rent my spot out, which I understand, so. Do you think the West Coast is looking for some kind of event like that? Yes, <laughs> me, especially me. I mean, just as a creator, just to see that happen. And, you know, we used to run down in San Diego at the tracks down at Barona Drag Strip, but it's like driving six, you know, six hours, then got to do a turnaround trip. Yeah. It's, it's pretty intense. Which is also, I mean, considering how much space and how much road there is in California, you got the time and the space to do it. I mean, an abundant amount of space, but I feel like a lot of the streets are residential. I mean, even industrial spaces that we yeah. race at, it's just the companies complain more than anything. You know, sometimes tries to get left on people's properties, and you know, we do things that we're not supposed to do, which I understand. So, no, and I, I can see that. that. That's where that's being a good neighbor thing comes right. in, where it's like if you are gonna <laughs> if you are gonna do some kind of illegal drag racing, like. You know, pick up your trash, guys. Come on. Yeah, I mean, plus all the, you know, the the racing scenes out there, we pretty much all race on the same street. So, like, the cars, the the Harleys, the mini bikes. Sometimes, like, we'll share a Sunday with the Harleys being on the same street as us all day. Nice. Okay. So, so how did you get in touch with Go Power Sports? Ah, oh, man, my man Bernie actually reached out to me. Yo, yo. <laughs> and it's funny when I seen the text message. I think I was sent out to shop, and I'm like, no way, because I think the news have had just recently interviewed us over at Votes, and I feel like that was a big point. Then Bernie reached out to me, and I was just like come on down <laughs> like I will show you the amazing time <laughs> so Bernie how did you come across Day Day Instagram and seeing his feed was not only related to the new mini bike career that that just taken off but he's also a filmmaker you know and he's holding giant area Alexas and <laughs> C200s and Sony's and it's like okay we're gonna link and connect on more than one level so let's let's hang out i gotta go back to long beach anyway let's hang out all right so he came down you know showed him some of the toys over at the shop you know we had a couple of tommy bikes over there we had a couple of bikes that other customer bikes that we was working on you know he got to meet the dog the family he got to meet the taco lady across the street <laughs> so we showed him a good time i saw a car uh the the accident oh yeah the banshee my homeboy mark yeah. shout out to mark man yeah he recovered good but oh is he, he's doing good now? yeah he recovered he bought a hellcat oh <laughs> Okay, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. So wearing that helmet though, I yeah, bet, right? Yeah, man. He I wish he did he have that on? 
No, no. Uh, he didn't. So uh, safety first, everybody. Please yeah. wear a helmet. You know, operating any off road or mini bikes or anything that needs a helmet. Please wear a helmet. Yeah. No. Just walking down the street, you never know. Piano's yeah. falling. Yeah, you know, you know. Might, a purse might hit you in the head. <sighs> you got to be careful out on these streets, folks, and that's why we encourage people to wear helmets no matter what you're doing. Yeah. Watch out for the cats. The, the cats, cats and dogs. Yeah. But on top of helmets, even leathers, if you're going super I fast. I mean, yeah, especially leathers. I mean, when I had my accident, I was actually wearing just a t-shirt and just some regular shorts. Yeah. So walk me through this accident. Were you in a tournament or were you just cruising? Let me run it back. Okay. <laughs> so we actually was, well, I participated in the, a ride out event out in Vegas. Shout out to Team Sick with it. You know, everybody out in Vegas, my people. We was actually out there because somebody from Team Sick with it graduated. Nice. So somebody's son graduated, and they was like, hey, let's do a big ride out. That's a big congratulations, you know, especially that goes to show how big the mini bike scene loves and support everybody. We drove all the way from L.A. to Vegas just to go ride out for Sounds somebody like graduating. a good time. So we rode all of Saturday evening and Saturday night. We probably rode until like 3 o'clock in the morning. Is this through the Strip or just outside Vegas? Everywhere Vegas. North Vegas, West Vegas, South Vegas. So we didn't hit the Strip until Sunday just because we didn't want to keep riding down the Strip and just cause attention. We just wanted to make that one good pass just to, you know, parade through the Strip yeah. and just go about our days. We actually rode that Friday night to Friday morning and did the same thing the Saturday evening to set this little Saturday night. That day, we were all burnt up. We like, hey, group of guys let's go chill and just ride our bikes and you know i was testing my bikes i was having some problems with my bike so i was trying to make my bike go faster why i don't know i don't know why we do these it's things with me man yeah <laughs> i know mini bikes ain't easy but it, it's, it's really become an addiction where it's just like i wake up seven days a week and this is what i do yeah but back to the story i made like three passes just having fun with my people and i'm like man my bike is running good like i just want to race somebody so my homeboy was like hey where are my bike and i'm like all right why not so I ended up doing a pass, best pass this bike have ever did in my life. I hit 85, so I'm super proud nice. of myself for that. You know, I built the whole motor. So oh. yeah, that was a big accomplishment. Nice. Congratulations, dude. It. Calm down, calm down. Yeah, calm down. <laughs> Sorry, one second. Uh, oh, guys, guys, come on. Yeah. A little space, please. <laughs> but yeah, so at the end of the track, I actually went past the, you know, the quarter mile. I got wrapped up with just having too much fun and not thinking about safety first. Mm. So it was like a speed bump at the end of the track, which caused me to fly in the air. I tumbled about four times. Mm. I got knocked out the first portion of it, but when I hit my head on the second impact, it woke me up and it probably drugged me about 40 feet. Wow. Yeah. I have footage of the helmet, so we'll throw that in right here. <laughs> are you gonna are you gonna like bronze the helmet? Are you gonna put it in a case uh, or something? You know, I'm still contemplating on what I'm going to do with that still wear it. Oh. Actually. I know it's a bad thing to not wear it's if you wear a helmet you fall in like yeah. The philosophy is you're gonna fall in it again. But I don't Oh, is know. that like is that like a thing? People yeah, like that? when Harley people go down on their helmet or people dive the helmet, like they keep the helmet or you hang the helmet up, you buy a new helmet. Yeah. Because it's just bad luck. I think the DOT also recommends it, but I think that's just because they degrade after accidents. I mean, it's not the first time I've fell on a helmet. <laughs> 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 Safety first. Do not do the things I do. I am a trained professional. So you go tumbling. Right. What happens? Ambulance comes down? Buddy no. run down there? So you get up? my friends were, the people I was racing with was the first to the scene. Um, the person that clocked me. He was like third. Then everybody else was just like, oh my gosh, he fell. And I'm like, I just fell. I don't fall. Like, yeah. I usually, I'm a super, very cautious person. Anybody knows me, like, I always play safe. But that day, I'm like, I'm going to go all out. Yeah. And I should not. But that's what happened. We get caught up in having too much fun. But when I got up and I looked at the bike, the bike was doing good. So I'm like, all right, I'm the bike good. I should be good. Then I looked at my arm and I'm like, oh, crap. No more skin. Or did you see bone? It was no more skin. Like Those my pictures are pretty gnarly. Uh you got the pictures? I was I was about to go pull them up. Yeah. yeah. But nothing broken as far as Nah, bones? luckily bless, you know, nothing broke, you know. It's just very painful. Oh, I'm sure. So after that, you see that you're done up, you just admit yourself to the hospital. Yeah. And how long were you there for? Uh I was at the hospital not not long. I was probably like four or five hours. It was pretty fun though. As bad as it was, I was in high spirits. I know, I feel like I was having more fun than everybody at the hospital. I was cracking jokes, like we had a ball at the hospital. <laughs> like I know I was in bad <laughs> condition, but I'm like, yo, I'm a jokester. I got, yeah. <laughs> you know, I gotta keep, oh my gosh, look at that. 
Uh, yeah, it was pretty gnarly. Okay, we'll throw this one up for the uh, podcast. Yeah, yeah censor <laughs> for everybody that's about to watch this next few clips. Uh, oh, yeah. Be Trigger prepared. Warning. Yeah, please be prepared because yeah. it was pretty gnarly. Yeah, that's my left shoulder. I actually had a hole in my shoulder that I was able to actually like stick my finger in. Oh, pretty so bad. Boy. They just bandaged you up, or uh, no, I was. Stuck like that for like the first hour and a half because they had to do x rays, so I couldn't take any pain medicine or nothing. So, but like, no, you had no fractures, no breaks, no fractures, no breaks. I was just, just very abrasions. road rash, yeah. yeah. I know that scar on the back of your leg came out pretty dope, though. Oh man, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's probably my coolest one. I was gonna say that it's it's pretty cool, even the one honestly, the ones on your hands, I'm sure they're gonna heal. Uh, more, I just don't like, like this one. I like, I feel like I look like a snake right now. <laughs> no, dude, it's, it's kind of cool looking, it's right? kind of embarrassing. Like, when I was first going back into public, like, people would be staring at me like. Oh, either he has a severe skin disease or something's wrong with him. Yeah. So it was always a fascinating story to tell everybody. Then like all the kids, like I go. Then you start like jittering and stuff, and then you get the whole subway car to yourself. Nah, <laughs> it was just like everybody, like kids will come up to me, oh, like they'll pull on my shorts, like what happened to you? And I'm just like, let me tell you a very <laughs> scary story. Because <laughs> oh after God. that scary story, Tim heard it. And he said, "Get them leathers. Like I will pay for them to have some leathers." Did you ever get these leathers? Most definitely, and I appreciate it. The first people who received the leathers is Fast Lane. Mm. So shout out to Fast Lane. I'll um, throw up that video too. Yeah. I'm Doink. There. I think we still waiting on the rest of everybody. But you know, it's a slow process. You know, things don't happen yeah. overnight. And yeah. just for somebody like Tim just to come. For those who know don't know Tim, can you explain who Tim is? Tim's like the co owner along with my dad. He's Taylor's dad. He's like the dad, the owner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So co owner. But yeah, Tim's got a heart to take care of people. Yeah. So both Tim and Dave. Right. I was gonna say, not to, I don't wanna be like Tim's got a heart to take <laughs> More care of people. Tim than Dave. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Both of them. Both of them like, you know, they, they have a lot of empathy and a lot of care for right. others. And I think that it shows in the way that they right. they wanna do outreach. They wanna make sure people are staying safe. So we appreciate that. You know, everybody back on the West Coast. It's pretty big. Every time we go power sports come to town, everybody was just like, yo, we gotta get them. We we wanna get on camera somehow, <laughs> some way. And I'm just yeah. like, hey, I can I'm going to do whatever I can to try to, you know, make that dream come true. Yeah, Because sure. GoPro Sports is a big deal to everybody in the go-kart and, and mini bike industry. Like, yeah, it's awesome. It's really a big I remember I used to watch, you know, Cars and Cameras video as a kid. You know, I still do. But I used to watch it as a kid, and I used to be like, yo, how are they sponsored? Like, every time <laughs> the flame used to just come up on the screen, on the screen, just like, <laughs> GoPro Sports. And I'm like, yo. <laughs> Side note, Cars and Cameras changed that logo to a newer one. I think I've asked John, and I think it's already just been embedded, though. He's like, eh, whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's cool. It's just yeah. like... Now it's a trademark, sports. you yeah. know? But, oh, back to the leathers. Um, yeah, I feel like it's pretty dope. Pretty stylish, too. I wish I had some. Like, maybe I'll have some more in my skin. <laughs> yeah. So Next time. Yeah, next time. Next go around. Yeah. <laughs> next go around. So yeah. I'll be preparing next time. Yeah, Hopefully yeah, I don't sure. fall. Knock on wood. We're not supposed to knock on wood. But pop, pop. yeah, it's okay. We can knock on the table in this case. This is that, that's a good luck one. <laughs> so, but anyway, so let's take a quick break. Mm -hmm. We're going to hear a few words from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Get ready because it's that time of the year again. What's up, race team? It's Jason at Go Power Sports, your one stop destination for all things mini bike and go kart related. We've had two incredible years of the Go Power Sports 180 mini bike race, and this year we're gearing up to make it even bigger. Mark your calendars for November 11th, 2023 because you won't want to miss the third annual Go Power Sports 180 mini bike race. Whether you are a seasoned racer, or a newbie, this is your chance to showcase your skills, tune up your mini bikes, and join us for the adrenaline pump and race. Your goal is to have one mini bike cover the most ground in 180 minutes. So are you ready to feel the thrill of the race? Join us on November 11th for the third annual Go Power Sports 180 mini bike race. Can't wait to see you there. And we are back. So we were just talking about electric bikes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and Zane's trying to go 100 miles an hour <laughs> on his electric bike and forgot I, there's a switch would, in the back. I would. <laughs> <laughs> Sheesh. 
I would settle for going 35 on an electric bike because right now I can, if I go downhill, I can get just over 30 on the bike that I'm using. Nice. And now I'm like, man, I just want to be able to go faster because I hate the feeling of having cars riding behind me. <laughs> it just bothers me so much. And especially they hate I'm, it just as much. <laughs> yeah. I can't go any faster. Come on. That's I turn into Ben Shapiro whenever I <laughs> whenever I'm riding my mini bike. I would like to know a little bit more because the first time I met you right. was at Vaults. So I came down with Bernie before I was even working here. Uh, we were just chilling in Compton. So tell me a little bit about like how you got hooked up with the guys at Vaults and like what you guys do there. Yeah, so I got introduced to, to Vaults through uh, Mini Bike Tommy. You know, big dude and a mini bike scene out there. So I actually got introduced to them because they were homeboys at the time. And I remember seeing votes on Instagram and I'd be scrolling and I'd just see this dude in the garage. And I'm like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> 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 Little do you know, I ended up working there three years later. Yeah. But um, so I got introduced to them. You know, that was really like my, my break in the ice point and like actually filming with, you know, like, I want to say cinema-rated camera, but a pretty good camera. I had a black magic at the time. So that was just, like, my stepping point where it's just like, all right, I'm taking it serious now. Gotcha, so gotcha, okay. Started doing that. You know, I've always been, like, a motor enthusiast, you know, learning from Daryl. You know, I picked up a few, you know, tricks of the trade. So I started working there doing, you know, motor builds for everybody and just. So Vos is basically, like, a smaller shop that we work at, you know, which is growing tremendously like from the part that we started to the part that we're at now it's just like it's it's crazy well i've seen see. some of your videos where you're picking up like i'm gonna say approximately a million predator engines oh Is yeah that what's happening yeah we like those? to <laughs> i don't know why it's funny it's funny it's the fact that you say that so every time <laughs> we go to harbor freight like they just see us and they'd be like what's up then they'd go to the back and bring out like every predator they have in inventory so like every time we come we buy out all their stock Nice. So, like, they personally know it's not where it's just like, all right, we're going to make a few dollars today. I like that. And do you put your own little sauce on these engines? Or uh, so, stock? You know, some people buy stock motors. It literally all depends on the type of bike that you're going to buy. You know, we, okay. pretty much how Go Power Sports does it. Like, we have packages that you can order depending on what you is and what you want to do with it. You know, some people are just starting off so they just get a stock bike or some people want a custom seat to match their frame or you know simple things like that that's just what we do so do you guys make frames there uh we used to um it got to the point because his dad is our fabricator at the shops but yeah. he still works a full-time job so find the time to do you know he makes all the handlebars over there and, and all the pipes and he helps work on other people bikes that shouldn't be worked on because some people be having some death traps Ooh, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. We're gonna. I want to come back to the this. The things yeah. you will see that come into that shop is ridiculous. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's a but, nuclear bomb with two wheels. But we all was there at one point in time, so it's like I completely understand. Okay. And it's not throwing shade on anybody because I started the same way. Like people know, the first bike I had was a Joe's mini bikes with a Briggs and Stratton. I had a leaky carburetor and no oil change ever done to it without an exhaust pipe. Mm. So every time you hear me come down the street, it just sounds like bubbles, like. Boop, 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 boop. Yep, <laughs> and you just see me like. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I think last time I was out there, the some guy. I stopped in and he was like my bike keeps shaking a little bit and his whole frame was cracked oh yeah i remember that it was like <laughs> his I, whole frame was yeah. cracked so dude was like oh um my bike keep vibrating like bad and we like all right we'll check it out and i looked and i'm like bro your frame is cracked like you could see the the frame just like this <laughs> it was like it was like a motion picture edit it was just like <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like Yo, you, you you know, a lot of times kids come through with bikes that they find to offer up or Facebook Marketplace and they, you know, that's all they can afford or all their parents are willing to, you know, help them afford, which is completely understandable. So we like to help out the community. Like we really give out a lot of free stuff for kids. You know, I give out a ton of merch, you know, stickers, helmets sometimes, engine parts, sometimes a frame. Like kids be coming up on some good stuff. I wish I was around when I was a kid. <laughs> so I can get some of the stuff that I give up because it's like, yo, huh, yeah. I wish. <laughs> no, I wish. Well, it's good. No, but that's the thing is you're being the person that you wished you would have had back then. It sounds like you still had some good right. mentors in the school. Oh, most stuff, definitely. So. You know, people in the mini bike culture on the West Coast, we really look out for each other. Like, really, like, we'll just be doing things where it's like, hey, I want to go and just go grab food or be barbecuing in the backyard. You know, everybody come over with the bikes. We relax, go home, go about our day. 
where does the scene in Compton, what, like, how do mini bikes fit into that culture? And how did, do you know kind of where it started? I or? mean, if I could speak for Compton as a whole, I feel like Compton is not just one scene. Like, Compton is a total mystery. Like, you never know what you're going to see in Compton. Like, you might see a dude ride down the street on a horse and pull up and park his horse at the liquor store. Yeah. <laughs> I swear, I am Compton, not Compton Cowboys. Yes, yeah. I am not making this up. <laughs> nice. You will see dudes on four wheelers on dirt bikes. You will see race cars going down the street. You, of course, you go see a mini bike at least five times a day out there. Nice. Like yeah. at least, like everything is going on in Compton. Like Compton is like, if you think like a million flies stuck in a globe. That's yeah. how Compton is. Like, it's, it's always something going on. Hey, you walk across the street at Volts, you get some of the best tacos. Yeah. In oh, what was that? Menudo? We got that menudo. Menudo. Last time. Oh, man. Mol- molitas. You know, they got carne asada, el pastor. Yeah. Like, yeah. everything. Like, yeah, just, yeah, mama's in the back there. Yeah, out the backyard. Like, you know, it got you a little tent, got the gate. I let, you got to come, Jason. I, I would, sounds delicious. Yeah. It was. Tacos. So, on Volts mini bikes, is there a Volt frame? So we have multiple, I think we have like three different frames that, you know, if somebody want, we can possibly consider making it. It honestly just takes a lot of time out of our days. Like we sell a lot of pipes, like people love our exhaust pipes, you know, the cruiser pipes, the race pipes that I pretty much nourish, you know, it it wasn't my idea, but the style, I was like, I want it like this because I need my bike to look different, and the sound it makes is amazing. Yeah. So, did you develop this? You worked with, or you worked alongside? I wouldn't say develop this, but I especially pushed for it because gotcha. when I was going to Vegas, I'm like, look, I need a pipe, and these other pipes keep breaking on me, so I need a pipe that's not gonna break on me. And I mean, even in my fall, I fell doing 85 miles an hour. My pipe barely has like one dent in it. So on the on the mini bike frames, I've seen online that you offer different colors. All right. So stock people come in and they can pick one of these five colors. Do you always keep a color stock? Do you wait for a customer to pre-order a color? Well, the powder coat shop that we go to keep a lot of those colors in stock. Um, I recently added like probably twenty different colors, especially for the tenor bars that the shop keeps in stock. And I think it's over like if you want a custom order, I think it's like over like a thousand different colors you can choose from okay but you know custom colors prices go up like some colors can uh needs like two colors like the base color and the main color that to mix with it it's, it's a whole it's a whole oh my gosh just a headache no color theory is interesting man, especially uh, when you're dealing with paints and i suck i have no type of like taste in designing anything so is it worth it having all those color options or would it have been best just to do a bare steel frame and let the customer take it from there? I mean, it's a 50-50 because some people that's coming into the mini bike scene absolutely have no idea how to work or how to even put together a mini bike. So a lot of times I try to make it easier because we want to make it affordable because we want more people to get into the sport, but we want people to be able to enjoy the bike and take pride into the bike at the same time. Because if I'm coming into the scene, I have no clue how to work on a mini bike. And, you know, bare metal rusts after a while. Some people may not have a spot to keep it in at their house. Or, like, when I first had my bike, my bike was outside. Like, yeah. I have bugs in my exhaust. Bike would be getting ringed on for, like, five days a week. Like, so I get it. So we try to, you know, try to help as, as many people out as we can, really. Have you thought about spray painting? Spray paint is cool until you start scratching stuff up. Like, before I had my truck, like, a lot of people, they got to put their bikes in the car. Like, you will see videos of me, <laughs> like, when I first started YouTube, like, I'd be starting my YouTube channel, like, in, inside my car, and it would be, like, my bike in my back seat with a sheet over my, <laughs> over my seat. So, I get it. I wonder if that would save money, though, having that spray paint option, but still help it from not rusting, but not paying for powder coating. I mean, it does, but it doesn't, because spray paint is really not durable. Yeah. Like, we're very hard on our bikes, yeah. especially me. Like, I'm very hard on my bikes. Like, I ride the heck on my bike, so I need the powder coat. And I'm already scratching my bike up. Like, <laughs> What's a week in your riding look like? Like, a week in my riding. So do you ride every day? I used to. Um, okay. I've been so busy at the shop, you know, helping customers out and doing social media. So I haven't had much time, especially after my fall. But I used to ride every day. Like, I'd just be riding for hours on hours on hours on hours, doing nothing. Did you ride to work? No. No, okay. That I wasn't risking. I used to work at night, so it was just like me. 
it's kind of inconsiderate starting to bike up at like 12 o'clock at night. Like, all right, I'm going to work. And you got to think about it. These are not no quiet bikes. Like, these bikes are like echoing and making noise. Like, if you ride to work with a premier clutch, like, your neighbors are going to hate you. Yeah. So, and that's, that's a, it. That's I, a plus for Zane then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Electric bikes. Yeah. And I don't stay in a too friendly neighbor. So, I'm, neighborhood. So, I'm not trying to make, <laughs> you know, too many people mad. Yeah. <laughs> so. What was the first time that you got on a mini bike? Like, when was the first time that you actually rode one? First time, the first time I rode a mini bike was actually, it was the first bike I bought, but I rode it on accident. I remember I was at my stepmom's house and there, uh, someone that's like, you know, a cousin or a stepbrother had a mini bike. And I was like, I got to ride that. But I was a kid and I, was, I didn't know what I was doing. And I got on it and I rode it on the sidewalk. And I was going like five miles an hour, but it felt like I was going like 70. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> this is crazy. Like seeing people with mini bikes, oh my gosh. Like as a kid, we used to, everybody used to have a Joe's mini bike with a wheelie bar. And they used to be wheelie in it. And they used to be clapping their feet in the air. Like crazy stuff. So seeing that as a kid, it's like, I don't know what that is, but I want one. But my mom was just like, no, you can't have one. And I was being so disobedient. I just popped up at home with one like. Like what I got. <laughs> when oh, was that? When did you pop up with one? Back in eighth grade, and she was so mad. Like she came home one day, and I had it tucked in the corner, like covered with trash bags. And she was like, "Get the thing out my house now!" Like that was all she cared about. She didn't even care about the fact I had it. She was just like, "It's too late now," but get it out my house. And I was just like, "She's like, I don't want to see it." Yeah, I was just like, "All right," <laughs> like at least I get to keep it. <laughs> so I was happy about that. Okay. So that was a Joe's mini bike frame? A Joe's mini bike frame. Does he still make his own frame? So you're thinking about Joe's mini bikes reunion and Joe's mini bikes shop. Totally two different Joe's. Yeah, totally two different Joe's. Yeah, there was a guy here at the 60th anniversary that had Joe's mini bike. A Joe's mini bike frame? Yeah, I guess we can post videos of that up too. Right here. Right there, folks. Right, right there? <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Good. And uh, so how many mini bikes would you say you have? Uh, I have one currently. In all total, I've had what? I had the Red Joes. I had the Blue Taco Joes, which was two. I had the Gray and Bear GTs, which is three. I had... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Which one was that? I had the one that was straight out the, uh, the Police Impound. Which was four. Um, Wait, you got it out from the police impound? Yeah, my uncle bought it out the impound and I bought it from him. Was oh. there a name to this frame or anything? Uh, or? I just call it uh, M8 number one. Because okay. it still had the seat on it, had the uh, the numbers from the impound. Oh, okay. Still oh, okay. Seat. That's pretty I probably sent Bernie a picture of okay. it or something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's number four. Then I had to do which one he was gonna uh, skip over that police thing like it was nothing <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> why tell us a story <laughs> then i had which one was after that i had to buy another frame because i ended up crashing because a kid stopped on mansville and i ran directly into the back of him oh, and man. i would probably send bernie a picture of that or a video yeah. of that like my front tire ended up where the motor goes and it was just like boink mess money up i was down for about two weeks or so bounced back so what was that number five i think i, I think number five yeah. i can't um, count then after that, I kept that bike, built that bike, and I sold it to Volts. Then about a month later, the motor cracked in half. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was just under too much stress, so I was just pushing it to its limits. Mm -hmm. Then after that, I bought a frame from Volts. That'd be number six. He ended up selling it before I could even put it together. Then he gave me another one, which is the bike I have now. Then I had the purple one that we was doing with Go Power Sports for the six-inch frame. And the customer ended up buying it off of me. Nice unintentionally you know but hey that's how business is ran Make you, know, always, you yeah. know what man i've had the same thing happen i made a little rascal and i was gonna do a video on uh -huh. it and then some guy bought it first day like first hour we were at pate this guy was like oh i like this let me take that so it, that's what happens. it's just part of the game man i mean luckily we are at a point in our life where we have you know the availability to get more yeah yeah so, so common theme on these mini bikes where they all just rigid suspension like no suspension at all mm, no i mean everybody back in the day they used to ride cat frames you know morgan frames and different type of frames to make it a bob frames you know some of the cat frames come with suspension mm -hmm. so some of the ogs got bikes that come with suspension but my generation we just got one piece everything yeah one piece forks one piece frame no suspension and we just going and no all like out. and you guys mostly have 
scrub brakes. Scrub brakes, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I was gonna say like I don't see any disc brakes out I there. I mean, we do, but that's I feel like that's just our way of saying, hey, this is a what they consider a LA bike. That's, I, no, it, like it definitely has its own style. Like it's interesting because when you watch those videos, you can be like, oh yeah, like that's a Compton bike when yeah. someone's using it, as opposed to like if you're watching something out here, it's probably gonna be kind of a hornet looking thing. Yeah, or, or, or a rascal like or a big tire drag bike, which we have those too. Yeah, like. All the OGs that used to race still have everything. Mini drag bike, you know, really? East Side racing. Like I was trying to take Bernie to East Side racing. I was, next time we go down, I'm most definitely taking Bernie yeah. there. So you go see what's some. East, what's East Side racing? A uh, OG from back in the day that got some bikes that's just insane. He got this new bike that he dedicated to his son that got killed. You know, a while back he called a bike Flood, and that bike just puts down like power that's just insane. It's so much power, they had to gear the bike down because the tire was spinning so hard off wow. the line. So the owner, Fast Mike, went down on that bike, and the jockey itself that's been riding, you know, Home Alone. Shout out to Home Alone. Home Alone is like an OG from, like, Home Alone and Rose, some of the fastest bikes around. Nice. It's like bikes that people like me would never even dare. So wait, his nickname is Home Alone. Home Alone. Okay, because... I don't know. Oh, oh okay. I thought I'm just was, too young. I, oh, okay. No, I thought it was, <laughs> that was like a before story my time. where he's like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, he that's a good question. fought off bandits I in his ask house him. or something. I should, like, I should really Sticky ask bandits. Him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to ask him how you got his name and I'll let you know. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. So shout so, me shout out to him. So. Yeah. Shout out Home Alone. I'm not knocking on the name. I'm just like, I feel like that has a story behind it. Yeah, so. It got to be. I mean, you never know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So you were talking about Compton bikes. We just got done shooting our Megamoto 98 mini bike kit, right. which is our Megamoto 80 with the front suspension uh-huh. and a 98 cc engine. Uh-huh. But then Taylor's going to go through and basically build like a Texas type of mini bike where it's going to be that same frame, rear swing arm with a bunch of shock and movability in the back, front and rear hydraulic brakes, big 10 inch billet wheels, and that thing's going to be singing with a 225 engine. Are you excited to ride our style of mini bikes out here? You know, it's funny. I was talking to Flacco last night when I was at his house and I'm like, I don't see how y'all do it. Like, if I see <laughs> suspension, like, I get scared. Really? Because, yeah. I totally get scared when I see sus- suspension. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe on a cruiser bike, yeah, but, like, a full race bike, like, I get terrified. Because I get just terrified like, thinking about your scrub brakes and just rigid frame. <laughs> well, yeah, we like, talked about that last night because Compton, you guys sit up higher with short frames. Yeah. Everybody here sits low and long. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of weird. It's like seeing a girl band on a little pocket bike. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I was going to say, your your guy's launch position is so wild. Because you'll be like, you'll have the bar in your stomach and be leaned over, ready to go. And I'm like, I don't know how they're doing it. But I guess you guys are basically just keeping front tire down. Yeah, I mean, it's so much power going to rear tires. Like, either the bike goes up. And, like, if anybody ever rode, like, a a three-inch type of motor, which is uh, the biggest one of some of the biggest motors that we race out there, it's Mm -hmm. like... You start going so fast where you can actually feel yourself sliding off the seat. Really? Yeah. It's like, it's the craziest thing ever. It's just like this. You start right here, then it's just like, woo. <laughs> sooner or later, pow. Oh, no. <laughs> so it's like, we position ourselves in a way to actually stay on the bike and actually stay in control of the bike. Like, if you see Dylan ride, shout out to Dylan, like, one of the craziest jockeys again. Yeah. Like, Dylan's like a, a total. He's like, one of the 100 mile per hour club. Oh, right? over 100 miles per hour. Yeah. Broke like, the record here, too, right? Yeah, broke the record here. Oh, wait, was he the one who rode and broke it? Yeah. Oh, that was okay. his first time ever on the track, too. But a bike they really haven't even dialed in yet. <laughs> yeah, but now, well, you know what? It, it did well. Yeah. Geared for quarter. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gear for the quarter broke the eighth mile record. Boy, This one? Oh, no. That's Sleeve Bike. That's, uh, that's Cleaves. That's Gold Digger. Oh. We're, we're talking about Woody Bike, the, the bear oh. frame. Oh. Okay, I got you. Uh, there you go. There it is. Okay. So that is Woody Bike. That's a billet animal um, on a GT's frame with Woody bars. For some reason, it pulls to the left. So they're reconstructing the whole bike. I think Woody go do a new frame. Mm. But that bike has so much power. It's crazy. Yeah. And the tone it makes. Oh, Bernie, play the clip from the from the reunion. See how the we'll launch start, off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this. Oh, uh, he's going against Flacco. Yeah. Shout out to Flacco. Flacco, cool, man. So yeah, you, we had fun oh, last so you, night. You guys got to hang out yesterday. Yeah. So what were you guys doing at the shop? Well, it's the kitchen. It's called the kitchen. Sorry. It's not the shop. It's the kitchen. <laughs> okay, so I can't... Okay, so we, you guys it's can the stand the heat. Mm-hmm. You're in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. What were y'all doing? What were you cooking up? Really, I went to Flocka House because, like, 
Flacco always been a super cool dude. And like being like me and Flacco talk frequently. So it's like, I gotta pull up on you because I know you got more than one bike. Like the red bike is not the only bike yeah. bike he got. You know, he got a few projects that he's working on. Yeah. And I love through his whole thought process and how he see things and see that, you know, the output on life. So when I got there, I seen his wife bike. His wife bike is crazy. Yeah, that pink bike. I Definitely was jealous. <laughs> yeah, they got a Louis Vuitton seat. The grip's crazy. It, it, like you, you can literally eat off the motor. Yeah. And I'm like, he keeps it that clean. Yeah, exactly. It's a rascal light too. Sorry. And yeah. it's a rascal light. Yeah. yeah. And it's a rascal light. It's pretty clean. Okay. So we was just over there chilling, you know, talking like some real raw mini bike talk that people probably wouldn't see on the normal, you know. Because people in Go Power Sports, yes, we do mini bikes, you know, which is cool. You know, that's what we do as a job. But after it, like, we're really about that mini bike life. Yeah. Like, for real, for real. I mean, that's like when you said that, like, you wake up in the morning and this is your life. I mean, you yeah. are in the life. I do this seven days a week. Yeah. Like, every day, all day. Like, I, sometimes I'd be at the shop until, like, 3 o'clock in the morning. Just working on bikes? I mean, what else am I do? I don't have much yeah. of a personal life either, so it's just like... <laughs> Yeah, you hey. mentioned last night you've lost relationships over me. Oh bikes. man, I lost relationships <laughs> messing with mini bikes, man. Oh, okay, we're gonna have to talk about that. <laughs> but first, we are going to take a quick break, hear a few words from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Are you on the hunt for a carburetor upgrade to boost your ride's performance? Look no further than the Go Power Sports 22mm Makuni carburetor kit, available in both aftermarket and genuine Makuni options. With its superior construction and precise tuning, this kit is sure to provide you with maximum power and efficiency. Whether you are a veteran racer or simply seeking to optimize your ride, the 22mm Makuni carburetor kit is the ideal choice. Don't wait any longer. Upgrade your carburetor today and discover the power. And we're back. So we have the GPS 180 here in a few months. Do you think you're going to be in attendance? Of course. Why wouldn't I? <laughs> that's going to ride. That's a no-brainer, yes. You're going to ride in it? Of course. Just because I got injured don't mean I won't ride no more. Nice, man. So okay. then you need a mini bike. Yes. What kind of mini bike would you see yourself building or getting? Well, you know, that's a good question. I think I should gather more information from Flacco. Oh, okay. okay. Got you. So I feel like he should help me out with that because he knows a lot about the inventory you guys have over here. So. Oh, yeah. If it was me, it'd be a Hurricane 200. Yeah, I mean, I like the 212 just because I like the profile of riding it a little bit better. Mm. But. Oh, yeah. We also have new things with our Megamoto 212. The Megalodon. Yeah. We now just unveiled our rear swing arm for the Megamoto 212. Swing arm? Yeah, rear swing arm. And it's pretty wicked. It's all bolt-on, no welding required. So, yeah, I would go t the Trailmaster Hurricane 200X, the Megamoto 212, and maybe a souped up a Megamoto 80 with the big 10 inch wheels on it. Oh, so yeah. So, this is my next question Is there a speed limit? No, there's not a speed limit. Okay. <laughs> but it's See, such rocky terrain that you may not want to. There's only a few places I would really open it up at. Yeah, because it's. I mean, I mean, that's the thing is basically it's just a giant rock tumbler that you throw some mini bikes into, yeah. like, and see what happens. Because it's I would go fun. With, I would go with big gears, like a six to one ratio, uh -huh. if not bigger. All right. uh, yeah, top speed, you're probably not on it for that long. All right. So it's just, all yeah. Right, all right. All right. So comfort is the name of the game in this one. I got some studying to do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, yeah. I was going to say, you could watch Andrew Porter's episode because he's going to talk about it. That's coming out next Thursday. All right. But, yeah. Make sure you're out. But by the time this comes Thursday. out, it'll have been out for like three months. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's cool. Yo, so yeah, speaking of studying and racing, you have such a deep history. Compton period has such a deep history in racing. You've seen our guys race and the bikes they use for drag racing. What tips and tricks do you have for our guys to be as fast as the Compton guys while maintaining the same look and Texas style of bike? Well, that's a good question, Bernie. Honestly, I feel like the first steps to even before you even look at, you know, going fast, you got to look at the whole aspect of what is racing and what is going to define us when it comes to racing. You know, you got to set rules. You got to set regulations. You got to set, you know, a clear understanding for, for everybody to agree to be like, all right, I know what I'm doing. I know how to, you know, do my bike so I can meet or even qualify for this type of class or 
you know, because at the end of the day, we're racing and we are really trying to keep everybody safe. So last time I was here, you know, it was like 10 people going down at once. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> what are y'all doing? I'm like, y'all got to relax. Like, you got to have it where, you know, going down lane and the coming back lane. Same thing like how they do at the racetrack. You got, you know, you go down, you go out and you come right back. You got to keep the, the motion, you know, we're trying to keep everybody safe. But then it really just come to... You got to understand how motor works, you know, or you just got to understand the simple things when it comes to having a fast mini bike. You know, sometimes you got to get your hands dirty. A long time, I didn't have nobody to really work on myself. Yes, I had Daryl, but he would just, you know, be like, look, if you want to learn, you got to start just taking things apart. You're going to mess up. That's what comes with it. Mini biking ain't easy. You True. just got to learn. I've like, heard that. This yeah. is, I mean, is it with a lot no, though? With no. no torque wrenches, right? Yeah, I mean... I don't torque anything. I ain't <laughs> never torque. I don't even know how to use a torque wrench, which is I the craziest thing out. ever. Oh, yeah. uh, really? Flacco was like, I heard y'all don't use torque wrenches. I'm like, yo. See, he's right <laughs> here. Torque right there. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. These, it don't get no better than 70 this. 70 foot pound. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but don't try this. I mean, you can if you want, but we're not reliable for any damages that come. Do not take my advice, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I feel like people should take it as a serious sport, though, because a lot of people like me, we are very passionate about this. I mean, like, look at us. Look at Flacco. He all geared up. He has his suit. You know, he got his helmet. He got the race gloves. Like, yeah. that's somebody that's taking this sport as a serious thing. So before anybody even started looking at the racing aspect, you have to look at how are we going to organize it to look like an actual organization. Then that become the next step. All right. Now I want to make my bike faster. We got the rules, we got the classes, we got things that actually look like an actual race. You get me? Once you, I feel like that's one of those things where you, once you get the parameters that you're operating within, right. that's when the real work begins because then you start actually figuring out how to go the fastest you can while adhering to this thing. Right. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with outlaw racing where it's like, you know, just basically just throw everything you want onto right. it. But it's also like, yeah, if you want it to kind of be a leveled playing field, you gotta you gotta know at least what the standard is, right. and then people are, can always go over that through work that they're doing on their bikes. Right, because um, it's, it's like if you go to a racetrack, you're not finna see a Jixer versus a tank. It doesn't work like that. You're not finna see a funny car versus a NASCAR. You're not well. You might see a Harley versus a sports bike, but that's outlaw racing. Yeah. But when you gather everything and everybody come on one accord, there are certain things that you can do inside a class and there are certain things you can't do inside a class. That's just how racing works. Yeah. That actually leads very nicely into the next thing I wanted to talk to you about is where do you see the sport and the culture going in the next like five to 10 years? I'm so excited. <laughs> like people don't understand like this is going to be a big thing and I'm going to be back sitting looking at the TV like I remember saying this is going to be a huge thing. It's going to be big. It's going to be worldwide it's going to be pay-per-view just how nascar is just mm -hmm. how race car top fuel nitro harleys we're going to be the same way we are the same way yeah people just don't realize it yet like this is going to be a big thing that's going to be a big deal to a lot of people and it already is like just you know me being in compton right now i got people text me from brazil puerto rico canada you know new mexico is just like it's slowly growing but once it gets to that point it's just sky high from there you told a, I think you were talking about at lunch the other day. You said that when you were leaving LAX. Oh, yeah. <laughs> some dude was just like, day day. Yeah. Hey, shout out to my guy from, I, I forgot, I didn't get his name or I forgot it, but Airport guy. I was standing in line and I was, you know, you know how you got the gates where they show you a ticket to make sure you got the right gate. And they, he just poked his head out like, and I'm like, oh, I'm in trouble. You're about to get pulled over. Yeah, I'm like, like I didn't even do nothing. <laughs> and he let me walk past and he turned around. He's like, hey, Dede. And I was just like, Dede. <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm like, I didn't, I was nervous. I'm like, is that a good sign? Your soul left your body. Yeah, I'm like, home. is that a good sign? Like, I'm just trying to hop on the plane and go to Texas. But he's super cool. He's like, man, I'm very supportive of what you do. Like, I appreciate what you're doing for the culture. Like, keep up the good work. And that's it. And I was just like, dang, I was not expecting that. Yeah. Like, I did not expect that at all. Like, that made me feel so good for yeah. somebody just to say, oh, I know you from somewhere and you were a good person. Yeah. I, I think it goes to show that it's it, it may not be a super big subculture, but it's a very dedicated subculture. And it's also very friendly. It's right. very inviting and opening. And, you know, people will talk to each other. <laughs> it's not like where it's like you don't recognize someone from a TV show and then it's like, okay, I'm not going to go bother them. Or yeah. Or like, it's like. I'm not a celebrity. Yeah. I'm not. No, you're not gonna. Yeah, you're not gonna bother Day Day. So here's your invitation, everyone. If you see Day Day, mm. go up, monopolize his time, talk to him for about a half an hour. He's got. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
If someone would have came up to me and yelled, Jason, I my usually my response is, whose boyfriend are you? <laughs> <laughs> play it, play it from the Himalayas. <laughs> we go get Jason in trouble. Yeah. I was about to say, Jason, for that joke, Jason. <laughs> You're sleeping on the couch tonight, buddy. <laughs> So the thing is, we see it, you know, I think all of us have this idea of a future where mini biking is something that is a bit more ubiquitous than it is right now. But what are the blocks that are stopping us from getting there? What do you think we need to do to make this so it's something that's more socially acceptable? I feel as a whole, we all need to come together to agree on terms. Just like the same thing I said about Texas racing. I feel like a lot of people need to take this more serious if they want to be a part of of the sport. And if you don't, it's okay. Or if you just want a mini bike, just have a mini bike, it's okay. Or if you're a guy that's really into vintage bikes and not really into the racing scene, it's okay. But I feel like everybody needs to support one another more. Because the only way we can do it, you can't do it by yourself. It takes a team. It takes, you know, a huge group, a a huge audience. Like, people have to show the same love and support like we're showing. You get me? Yeah. And I think it's being understanding that there's going to be guys who are gearheads and they want to work on their engines until 3 a.m. and mess around so they can go as fast as they possibly can. Right. And then you got other people who are just like, man, I just like the way this one looks. I just want to put it on my wall and look at it every day. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with and it. And then there are people who just want it. They just want to build them. They like building them and then they sell them and send them on their way. Or it's like a dude who came into the shop today just to go uh, buy a Motovox from you guys. And he was just like, I see my buddies riding one and I want one. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> wants to be a part of that community. And he has a full race truck. He got a turbo nitrous truck or something like that. And I was just like, I said, you're going to have more fun on this mini bike than you do in your truck. I guarantee yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if something breaks on the mini bike, it's a lot easier to fix. So. I mean, but it's more fun. It's like, all right, I blew a rod. All right, how do I find one? You call up Jesus. Hey, Jesus, I blew a rod. Where can I go? Here, got oh, you. 65 bucks. Go to yeah. Go Power Sports, man. They got the new rods and yeah. oh man, I, my piston for some reason fried up with the rings. Hey, and Go Power Sports got it. Then you go and you get tutorial videos on other people's channels like Re- Red Beer Garage, you know, cars and cameras. Mm-hmm. Where it's just like you start getting into it, it becomes a hobby. Where it's just like, all right, now I'm actually learning something. Some people that come to the shop over here in Compton, it's like they have never picked up a tool in their life. Like they don't know how to put air in their inner tube. They don't know how to put gas or even oil in the motor. And it's just like, which is acceptable. It starts opening up your mind to other things, to yeah. other things. Yeah. It's like being a construction worker. Yeah, That's it. That's how I look at it, like a trade job. I, and I, I think there's also something about you're creating something with your hands. Right. There's something about at the end of the day when you're working on a mini bike, like I am not someone who knows a lot about working on really anything automotive or vehicular. But at the end of the day, I can look at it and be like, you know what, actually, I put that mini bike together. That's pretty dope. So You get to be proud. And I mean, for a lot of people with um, fathers and sons that's connected and have a good relationship in their life, a lot of them come to the shop and it's something just to do with their father and son. Like father and son day, we're going to the mini bike races. The women stay home or the women come with us, but it's a father and son thing, or it could even be a a son and daughter thing, because there's girls that ride also. And I love bikes and, you know, love mini bikes and just having fun with it. It's something about a mini bike that is just very addicting. I don't know what it is. They, they might be mixing something in the frames or something. <laughs> well, well, for me, I think about mini bike that it's so it's, it's such an affordable way just to get on and explore. Like, right. if you want to go explore, especially out here in Texas, there's just vast amount of land out here to where if you wanted to go, go get lost for a few hours, you can do that. <laughs> and that's one of my favorite things about a mini bike. Like, I love going fast and being in that zone where everything's just ripping on, you know, everything's in, in tune. You put the bike together, it's not falling apart, and you're going 50, 60, 70 miles an hour. It's a great feeling. But I think just the adventure, that's what gets me addicted. Right. Cheap way to do it, throw it in the back of the truck, go find a nice little park, and just go ride around. Yeah, you could throw it in. Look, you could be like me. If you ain't got a truck, throw it in the back of your car. Yeah. It fit right on your seats. And throw a little, I, you know, I remember I was so impressed when you were driving out to go to the races the first time we were in Compton. <laughs> oh, you seen it? And I saw you, you just yeah. like, you like fit the bike into the back of your car. And I was like, what? How, do you, how are you doing that? It's the dedication. Oh, man, I tore that car up doing that too. Oh, yeah, I bet, <laughs> man. Yeah. Oh, but it, hey, you got to work with what you got. So That's, yeah. you, you're not going to have it all at the start. But yeah. if you work towards it, you can have anything you want. So... I guess this brings us to the big question because you're of the people in this room you're the one who's gotten closest but how do you feel about going 100 miles per hour on a mini bike uh it's completely terrifying (laughs) it like it's terrifying like it's the best feeling on the world but it's completely terrifying so have you gone 100 no the fastest i've been was 93 and i was like 
all right, <laughs> I think I'm throwing it in a towel or trying to reach a hundred. Like, I don't have it in me. Like, you really have to be one of them pioneers, like Flacco used to say. You got to be a pioneer to ride a bike that goes hundred. Because a lot of people that ride, you know, fast street bikes and fast Harleys, oh, I can ride a mini bike. Good. They get on the bike and they get off and they're all jittery. Oh, man, what you do to that thing? Speed wobbles. Yeah, everywhere. speed wobbles. You know, some people fall on, like, the first five feet. Really? I've seen it. I, wow. I know a dude that fell doing five miles an hour and broke two ribs. I lied to you not. That's that's a killer, though. But you know what? You just tell people that you had a mini bike accident. Yeah. So, yeah. They don't need to know it was five miles per hour. Yeah. No, not me. I didn't break <laughs> No, I know. Not you. Not oh, you. Yeah, I'm yeah, talking yeah, about yeah, this yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah. Well, how much does it take to be able to hit 100 miles how an hour? How much do it take? I mean... How much you got? 10 grand? Would 10 grand give me an engine and a frame to get me there? I mean, 10 grand probably get you two bikes. I'm not going to lie to you. Okay. It, you would probably end up spending just lo- alone in the motor. Probably like 3000 Okay. Four thousand. So it's like a three thousand motor. Yeah. I'm assuming from any. I mean, anybody. Big Daddy, right? Somebody who can make you go a hundred. Yeah. Okay. Someone who has a secret sauce. Somebody got that sauce. I don't have the sauce. I can make you go kind of fast, super fast, maybe, but ridiculous fast? Nah. <laughs> to <laughs> go ridiculous to fast, is that a complete billet engine at that point? Mm, I was. Uh, you know, it's funny. I would have to say yes, because the fastest that I've seen cast motors go is probably 99. And they were just one mile an hour, you know, away from reaching 100 mile an hour point. So I would have to say yes, as of now. I believe all cast motors can go. When I mean all cast motors, I mean cast engine block and yeah. cast head. Other than that, I mean, the only motors I've been 100 is all Billy Animals. Probably. How much horsepower do you think they're uh, putting down? You know, it's funny. I have no clue. I'm hearing maybe 40 That's over. what I'm thinking. At least yeah, 40. At least 40, maybe 40 over. Really? Yeah. Pretty impressive, right? I mean... <laughs> it's an engine it's... literally probably this big. Yeah. Pretty impressive to me. And what frames are typically uh, going that fast? GTS hobby frames? GT's frames, yeah. GT's got some real reliable frames that can take some damage. I mean, look at me. I just went, failed day 85, nothing happened. No. Yeah. Like, I just rode the bike not too long ago, probably before I even got here. Mm. I didn't crash into cars and all type of stuff. My frame, there's never wrong That's, with it. We need to stress test the rascal. We need to see how many cars you can crash into with a rascal. Wow. <laughs> Well, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, that's uh, like That's actually the next session. We're going to get you geared up and we're going to crash into some stuff. <laughs> I'm <So>. with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with it. <laughs> what you need to do? Hey, Bernie, yeah, where, where my jacket at? <laughs> right. So we just finished prototype number two on our slammed Rascal bike. Have you, have, have you seen heard, that on the shop? I've heard. I haven't seen it yet, but I heard. I think so it can be modded into either a slammed rascal bike or a drag rascal bike and I think Taylor has it set up as the slammed at the moment but you should definitely jump on it one time just so you can get your thoughts and feelings. I would love to to know if our drag rascal has what it takes to hit 100 yeah because we he has significantly lightened it up Mm -hmm. and he has made it definitely uh rigid with dual down tubes he has it to where there's so many mods you can do if you wanted to run live axle if you wanted to run with the bearing Mm. he has attachments if you wanted to add wheelie bars to it as well like taylor has thought tooth and nail over every part of this bike so i'm curious for you to ride it and just kind of give your two thoughts as well. Man, shout out to Taylor because that is crazy. Nonstop. Like, that is wonderful. Yeah, he started out with one, painted it, and said, man, we can do better. Kept going, man, we can do better. People put in their two cents. And it's just been a community over this bike, so would love to get your thoughts on it. Oh, most definitely. You know, I'm down for anything, pretty much. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's bad. (laughs) (laughs) What's next up on the calendar for Day Day? Uh, What are you doing? uh, What's in the next couple of months? What are you up to? I don't know what's next for Day Day. I mean, life life, life is mysterious to begin with. It's just like you never know. Yeah. You never know. You can never know. If you'd asked me a year and a half ago, what do you see yourself doing? I would not have answered doing a podcast about mini bikes. In you Texas. didn't know what a mini bike was. Yeah, I, in Texas. I, yeah, in Texas. Yeah, I would have been like, I have no, I uh, never would have come up with this. You know, I mean, that's, I'm that's my goal to get everybody in Texas. Everybody in Texas a mini bike. That'd be dope. Get everyone in Texas a mini bike. That's yeah. it. That'd be dope. You could be a governor off of that slogan. I know. <laughs> Both for Governor Bernie. <laughs> We've enjoyed having you out here for the past week or so. I hope you've enjoyed your experience coming out here and checking stuff out, seeing how we do stuff at Go Power Sports. What is like what's been your biggest takeaway about seeing kind of what 
Go Power Sports actually is at the ground level. The Southern hospitality is crazy. Like, come from the West Coast, like, having people, like, say good morning to you is, like, pretty crazy. Like, I don't even talk to my neighbors back home. So it's, like, <laughs> <laughs> seeing people just random people walk past me, oh, good morning, good afternoon, or, like, even Uber drivers, like, super cool. Yeah. I feel like that was just, like, the first starting point where I'm just, like, all right, this is going to be a good trip. Then just seeing how hard everybody work here, like, me mingling around with, you know, other workers and just showing me, the, like, the full process of how it works. Because I always, always wonder, and I'm, like, I wonder if I order something, do they recognize my name on the tag? Like, oh, they, they ordered this. Back in the day, I used to. Like, whoever it was, sometimes I, we took an order for Chuck Norris, and we would write things on his order, like, hey, Chuck. And I don't know if it was the Chuck Norris. Someone just had the same name. <laughs> We do, we do pay attention to yeah. that. Shouts sure. out to Chuck Norris. Yeah, <laughs> Chuck Norris sorry, man. sorry, Charles Norris. <laughs> That's a different guy. <laughs> My bad. But yeah, I mean, I'm seeing the whole operation, how everything operates. Like everybody here is just so humble, so, so down to earth. Like then it's just like we are really just mini bike enthusiasts doing mini bike stuff at the end of the day. Yeah. Like just hearing the customer calls, just at, asking questions about their mini bikes, asking what parts is you know universal to this or what stage. What, what stage kit should I buy for my new Motovox or my new Coleman? It's just like, it's just pretty tight. Yeah. We're like big kids having fun with mini bikes. Oh, for sure. <laughs> we're just playing with toys all day. Yeah, that's yeah. what we do. I mean, that's a, the, the slogan. I don't know how much of it is on our letterhead stuff anymore, but that's the whole tagline for it is we sell fun. We do. I and mean, that's what it is. I have an amazing one. Every time I'm on the bike, I'm having a complete blast. It's like you're just looking ahead and everything else is just boom just stress relief yeah. like we get people who come over to the shop all the time they'll just be like i just had to get away from the family for a little bit and i was going to ride my <laughs> mini bike and i'm like look i completely understand because life is not easy life is difficult and yeah. when you hop on that mini bike it's just like everything all your problems just go away oh, yeah. yeah i'm just like it's tight mini biking isn't, isn't easy but it isn't easy. i think that life gets a little easier on a mini bike most definitely i mean until you go down like me but i was gonna e say <laughs> even then for me life got even better after that you know i will say i think that 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 when you're saying like oh I, you know just i don't usually push it i'm usually a kind of a conservative cautious person right. and then you're like but you pushed it you were like you needed to see where the line was right and you found it no not yet oh dang you just so got even, blindsided so by even, a speed bump. So that speed bump is yeah. Really that tough. was the only reason why I went down. Really? Yeah. Oh. That was okay. the only reason why I went down. Everything was going good. I seen the speed bump. But I'm like, oh, I'm finna fall. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh! Don't you remind me about it? Yeah. yeah sorry. Sorry. Yeah. We're gonna. <laughs> we're just gonna keep cutting away to that photo. Like. <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is another thing I want to ask about. Uh, you had mentioned when you said that you guys used to do like ride outs and parades and stuff yeah. as mini, like a mini bike group. Yeah. Are you going to start that up again on the West Coast? Do you think the West Coast is ready to have mini bikes show up in parades and stuff again? I would love to. I just don't know how active parades are anymore. Just be, you know, COVID really to cause everything just to go like out the window. So. That would be a good thing to start back. I just don't know how soon or when it would happen or even the people to even talk to just to bring it back around. Because I was always just a person just attending the parades. I wasn't everybody who had, like, any authority or any, like, you know, connections with the main person who invites us. Yeah. But that would be tight because when I was a kid, I used to love doing that. Like, get a call, like, hey, we all going to the watch parade. Anybody want to go? Like, yeah. And so you go out and just ride? Yeah, we all huddle up. At, you know, it's always been different clubs, different shops in L.A. Then everybody just communicate and, you know, we all just get organized together and just go parade through, you know, wherever the parade is. That's awesome. We used to parade the motorcycles too for a minute. I forgot what happened with that, but that used to happen at one point in time too. Like, mini bikes always been a part of LA culture. Okay. It always, for a while. Yeah, I mean, it always been. Yeah. That's just the way it is. Yeah, back in Native American days, they were just I riding mean, around them, bramping that up. Hey, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> I have a clip of that. We'll post it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bernie. So five years from now, what do you see Day Day doing? Five years from now. I'm still be doing mini bikes. Mini Ain't bikes. nothing changing. Okay. It's just gonna be on a different <laughs> level. You feel me? <laughs> like, like mini bikes will just keep evolving. Yeah, but you're still I mean, be mini bikes it. evolve every year. Like, it doesn't surprise me how far mini bikes have came, and it won't surprise me how far mini bikes will go. I'm just still be doing the same thing. Mini bikes. Now, are you are you ever gonna get onto an electric bike? Yeah, I ride electric bikes. You ride electric bikes? Of course. I didn't know. I ride anything. Really? I got okay. quads, dirt bikes, mini bikes. I had a go kart. I had a shopping go kart at one point. Like, oh really? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, nice. when I tell you, like, I'm down. Anything with a ride, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm on it. <laughs> awesome, man. Okay, that was perfect. 
Day Day, thank you so much for hanging out with us this week and coming on the podcast. I think we're going to go grab some dinner, right? Are we? I'm going to show you some, te- some Texas, Texas, some Texas, Texas, some steaks from Texas. Some <laughs> from steaks from Texas. We're going to get you Something some yum- Texas. Yeah, so we got a, a few barbecue joints out here that are pretty good. So, we'll, yeah, after we hang up here, we'll go grab some dinner and I guess ha- have a good little time. Yeah. <laughs> all, y- all your Stexes live in all Texas, right? All your live in Texas. <laughs> Hey, Siri, what is Texas? <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you coming out. Sorry that it's so hot, but we're glad that you're out here. And, yeah, thank you ta- for taking the time. I appreciate yeah, the invitation. Man. It's been awesome. I always look forward to getting to hang out with you, man. You're a good dude. So <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Tear. Insert tear. Yeah. <laughs> so if you guys have any comments, make sure to leave them down below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and as always, boys, ride on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. How did we have to shut him? <laughs>